Hey movie fans, let's talk about the 1975 classic Funny Lady. It continues the story from the first one, giving us a mix of funny, surprising, and even sad moments. Ever wonder why this movie is still loved today? What makes it a symbol of the film world? It's something to think about as you watch. There are also some cool behind-the-scenes facts about making the film that might surprise you. While you enjoy the movie, think about your favorite memory or personal experience with it. Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. Movies are better when we can enjoy them together. So, grab your popcorn, relax, and join the ride of laughter and tears with Funny Lady. What do you think makes this movie a lasting symbol of the industry? Any interesting facts about it that you find fascinating? Let us know in the comments. Can't wait to hear from you. Funny Lady follows a familiar storyline akin to its predecessor, Funny Girl. Exploring a later chapter in Fanny Bryce's life, the film struggles to break free from echoes of the original, attempting to recreate its magic with recurring story beats. This time, the focus is primarily on the lead character, providing a more cohesive experience. Unlike the first installment, which occasionally shifted attention to another character, Funny Lady keeps the narrative centered around the lead, resulting in more musical moments. This shift makes it easier for viewers to invest in the plot, despite moments of dull relationship melodrama. Streisand's portrayal of Fanny Bryce's humorous side brings moments of delight. The film features show-stopping songs delivered with expected gusto from Streisand and a list star. While the musical performances stand out, they fall short of the memorable impact achieved by Funny Girl, especially with well-known songs like Don't Rain on My Parade. Streisand's singing talent remains a standout feature, overshadowing other aspects of her performance. James Caan's inclusion as the second husband proves commendable, bringing charm and likability lacking in the portrayal of the first husband. Khan's moments of humor complement Streisand's performance, creating a more enjoyable dynamic on screen. However, the movie falters in its later stages, with the epilogue featuring questionable old age makeup and wigs eliciting laughter rather than authenticity. Despite its shortcomings, Funny Lady, though dull at times and lacking in substantial storytelling for a two-hour duration, remains watchable. If the film had matched the musical brilliance of Funny Girl, it might have claimed superiority. In conclusion, the sequel falls short of its predecessor's greatness. While it struggles with repetitive story elements, it redeems itself through Streisand's musical performances and the improved focus on her character. James Caan's contribution adds charm, but the movie's overall impact is hampered by inconsistent humor and questionable visual choices in its conclusion. Funny Lady, released in 1975, is not without its backstage tales. In a controversial move, Barbara Streisand became an Academy member before Funny Girl hit the screens, winning an Oscar alongside Katharine Hepburn for The Lion in Winter months before her film's release stirred discussions. The movie unfolds a noteworthy dressing room scene where James Caan and Barbara engage in a surprising powder encounter. Director Herbert Ross, colluding with Caan, turned a light, dusting expectation into a full-blown powder storm, creating both dramatic and humorous effects. This particular scene holds a special place in Streisand's heart, ranking among her personal favorites. Behind the camera, cinematographer Vilmos Zygmunt's lighting style, inspired by 1930s musical theater, faced disapproval after the Great Day musical number dailies. Director Ross defended Zygmunt, but Barbara Streisand was taken aback by his dismissal. Subsequently, James Wong Howe took over but fell ill midway, with Ernest Laszlo stepping in temporarily. Laszlo's contribution included the Aquacade sequence near USC, while aerial photographer Nelson Tyler assisted in the Let's Hear It For Me number filmed at Santa Monica's airport. Funny Lady, in its backstage journey, encountered unexpected changes from controversial Oscar wins to surprising on-set antics and shifts in the cinematography team. These off-screen incidents add layers to the movie's narrative, making it more than just a sequel, but a production with its own unique tales. Funny Lady, a sequel to the 1968 film Funny Girl, holds a distinct place in cinematic history. While its release year of 1975 aligns with another movie, Lucky Lady, the former debuted in March, preceding the latter's December arrival in the U.S., the sequel maintains continuity with its predecessor through the reprisal of Barbara Streisand as Fanny Bryce and Omar Sharif as Nikki Arnstein. Notably, director Herbert Ross, responsible for the musical sequences in Funny Girl, took the helm for Funny Lady. 
The film centers around Fanny Bryce, excluding characters from the original movie, except for Nicky Arnstein. Ray Stark, producer of both films and husband to Francis Arnstein, portrayed by Samantha C. Kirkaby, adds a familial connection to the production. Delving into behind-the-scenes anecdotes, Streisand's early Academy membership before Funny Girl's release stirred conversations, especially after her Oscar win alongside Katherine Hepburn. A memorable dressing room scene featuring James Caan and Streisand in a playful powder encounter became a standout moment showcasing Ross's directorial ingenuity. Cinematographer Vilmo Zygmunt faced criticism for his lighting style inspired by 1930s musical theater, a departure from the norm. Unexpectedly, James Wong Howe temporarily replaced Zygmunt and Ernest Laszlo contributed to sequences like the Aquacade near USC and the Let's Hear It For Me number at Santa Monica's airport with aerial photographer Nelson Tyler's assistance. These off-screen incidents weave a unique narrative around Funny Lady, transforming it from a mere sequel into a production with its own captivating tales. Despite its shortcomings, the film's backstage journey adds layers to its narrative, making it more than a continuation but a story in its own right. Barbara Streisand, known for her role in Funny Girl, achieved a unique distinction among actresses by winning a Best Actress Oscar for a film in which she sang in character. This accolade places her alongside 11 other actresses, including Ingrid Bergman, Julie Andrews, and Reese Witherspoon. During a scene with James Caan, Streisand had concerns about toxic talcum powder and the playful defiance from Caan added a touch of humor to the movie. The scene, captured in a single take, resulted in laughter from both stars. In 1977, James Caan gave Funny Lady a commendable rating of 9 out of 10, praising its quality. Streisand's co-star added charm to the film, contributing moments of humor that complemented her performance. Despite some shortcomings, including questionable old-age makeup in the epilogue, Khan still found Funny Lady highly watchable. Behind the scenes of Funny Lady, intriguing details about its production emerge. Streisand's controversial early Academy membership and her Oscar win alongside Katherine Hepburn before Funny Girl's release stirred discussions. Director Herbert Ross's collaboration with James Khan led to a surprising powder encounter, creating a memorable scene for Streisand. The film's cinematography faced challenges, initially disapproving Vilmos Zygmunt's 1930s-inspired lighting style. Unexpected shifts in the cinematography team, including James Wong Hao temporarily replacing Zygmunt, added layers to the movie's narrative. A sequel to Funny Girl, Funny Lady maintains continuity with Streisand reprising her role as Fanny Bryce. Released in 1975, the movie precedes another film, Lucky Lady, released later in the year. Director Herbert Ross, responsible for Funny Girl's musical sequences, helms Funny Lady, focusing primarily on Streisand's character. Ray Stark, producer of both films, adds a familial connection to the production. In conclusion, the backstage tales and unique challenges during Funny Lady's production contribute to its identity beyond being a mere sequel. Streisand's accolades, coupled with unexpected moments on set, make it a distinct chapter in cinematic history.